Good morning children. Today we will learn about a very interesting topic and that is about the most friendly object to we human beings, machines. When you open a jar or toothpaste tube, you rotate the cap or lid, right? You may have seen the small nail like things used to hold these things. These all are a type of machine called a screw. Screws are used to lower and raise things. They are also used to hold the objects together. A screw looks like a nail with grooves cut into it. It has a winding edge with threads. This winding edge is actually an inclined plane wrapped around a rod. Surprise, right? How is screw having an inclined plane? Imagine you are folding a paper around a rod and you fold it in a slanting angle. So that paper goes all around the rod. If you remove the paper, you will see in a small length of the rod, a large length of paper fit in. And these threads are nothing but very similar to the paper. In a small length, a larger number of threads fit in and that is what makes the screw hold the object together. The screw also has a groove on its head where the screwdriver fits in. The screws are used to fasten components and machine elements that can be loosened again, unlike the nails. Here is a good example. This is a bulb which has screw at the bottom of it to fix it in a holder. The threads grip the holder and the bulb resulting in a secure hold. The only way to remove the bulb is to unwind it thereby the screw at the bottom of the bulb goes in the opposite direction and the bulb comes out. The metal or plastic lid on a glass jar is nothing more than a white screw. The lid of the glass jar has a raised edge that forms a screw shape and the metal lid has matching thread on the inside. Turn the lid one way and it comes off the jar, turns it the other way and it tightens the jar. You know our kitchen knife or woodcutter's axe is also a machine. They are called as wedge. A wedge is a simple machine used to push two objects apart. The wedge is one of the oldest mechanism. A wedge is nothing but it's made of two inclined planes. These planes meet and form a sharp edge. This edge can split things apart, so mostly wedges are used for cutting. A good example of a wedge is an axe, where the head of the axe is made up of two inclined planes which do the work of cutting the wood. We push the axe downward on the top of the wood. The wood is not crushed under the edge of the axe but rather it is pushed apart into two pieces as the X moves through it. Nails are also the example of wedge used to concentrate the force of the hammer. This way the nail drives deep into the wooden object or on the wall with little effort. When you open a can with a spoon or open a bottle with a bottle opener, you give them a support and apply force to open them, right? 
this opener is called as a liver so now we will talk about a liver a liver helps you move something heavy or make something go fast liver is basically just a long stick or board that rests on a turning point this turning point is called as fulcrum of the liver and an object that liver moves is called as load so liver needs four things to do work a bar a fulcrum a load and an effort the components of a liver can be arranged in three different ways to give three different kinds of livers first class liver second class liver and third class liver let's look at each of these the first class liver is the one you may be most familiar with scissors pliers can openers or seesaw are some examples of a first class liver in a first class liver the fulcrum lies between the applied force that is effort and the load at the opposite end a good example of a first class liver is a seesaw let's say that you are really light and you want to lift a really heavy person on the opposite side if you put the fulcrum in the middle of the seesaw plate you won't have a chance but if you slide the fulcrum closer to the heavy person it will be easier for you to lift if you sit on the other end how because your side of the seesaw is much longer so when you move from a much greater distance you have to put less effort to lift the heavier person on the opposite end and that is what liver does scissors are the first class levers too because the fulcrum is between the applied force and the load the load are the blades our hands are applying the force on the opposite end the more the length of the handle of the scissors the less force of cutting will be required a claw hammer is also a first class lever confused no look at it the handle and the claw of the hammer work as a lever arm the fulcrum is the top of the hammer head which rests against the wood and the nail you are trying to pull out of the wood is the load so the load is on the one end fulcrum in between and your effort on the handle is on the opposite end and as the length of the handle of the hammer on which you apply the force is more than the length of the claw on which the nail is attached you don't need as much effort to pull the nail from the wood the second class lever is one where the fulcrum is at one end and the applied force is on the other strange isn't it the load that is to be moved is between the fulcrum and the force the best example of a second class lever is the wheel barrow the wheel is the fulcrum the handle takes the effort and the load is placed between them the effort travels a greater distance to the fulcrum compared to the load's distance to the fulcrum so you can lift a heavy object using the wheel barrow by applying less effort a nutcracker is an example of second class lever where the nut is the load the upper part work as a fulcrum and handle takes the effort 
so the nut or the load is placed between the effort and the fulcrum hence it's a second class lever third class of levers have the effort placed between the load and the fulcrum fishing rod is a third class lever where the fulcrum is your hand the bait or the fish is the load which you are trying to pull out and the middle of the pole is where the most of the effort is and that's why it bends towards that side strange right i know you must be thinking that hand must be where the effort is and middle of the pole must be the fulcrum but no think of it load is going up so effort has to go down is your hand going down to pull out the fish no hand remains there only but the effort is actually felt on the center of the rod and that is why the center of the rod is moving downwards and the load that is a fish is moving upwards so now you know that the simple things around us are actually machines that help us do a lot of work by applying less effort and all of these simple machines can be joined together to make complex machines like cranes so machines are very friendly object that help us in a lot of ways in our day to day lives